Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. It's World Gratitude Day. Tony, what are you thankful for? I'm Tony Kornheiser, that I still look this good at 94. Yeah, wow, that's, am that's amazing. They got that embalming yeah. fluid on you already? That's good. That's great. Not only is it on me, but I drink it every oh, morning. Oh, There's oh. an embalming hey. fluid cocktail. Pours right through It'll my veins, gives me a healthy, away. it's a healthy glow. Oh, absolutely, it keeps me, oh yes. Yeah. If you drink embalming fluid, you're gonna be safe. <laughs> Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, the Cowboys come back, Bryson DeChambeau wins the Open, and Anthony Davis sinks the Nuggets. But we begin today with Seattle holding off New England on the last play of the game last night. Tackling Cam Newton behind the line of scrimmage as he attempted to run it in from the one-yard line and win the game. This was a great game. Cam Newton threw for almost 400 yards and ran for two touchdowns. Russell Wilson threw for five touchdowns and now has nine in two games. Wilbon, which quarterback impressed you more? Remind me again who won the game and remind me who got tackled at the one. <laughs> it was a great game. And Cam Newton played great, all right? And he, as he's the second guess himself, because he might have seen some film, if he gotten outside of that little traffic down near the goal line, he might have scored what would have been the game-winning points. But it's Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is the MVP at this point, Tony. Either he or Rodgers, one of them. I mean, Russell Wilson, this is what he seems to do all the time. And so it's, it's impossible not to be impressed, even when his, in his, in his, in his uh, 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 addresses to his team and when he talks during public interviews. He seems in command of everything. He's in that sweet spot of his career, I think. So, so this is interesting to me, because if I take the letter of the question, which quarterback impressed you more, the reason I would say it's Cam Newton and not Russell Wilson, who's a great quarterback, is that I knew Russell Wilson could do this, because he's been doing this for a while. Russell Wilson's career numbers, 88-44-1. He's been to the Super Bowl twice. I think he's a victim of geography. I think people don't really know what he does. I think Cam Newton impressed me more because he's on a new team with new players and new coaches, and we didn't know how it would go. He's willing, apparently, to do anything that the coaches want, and he's, you know, he's healthy. I didn't know that he could gun it down the field. Now I know he can gun it down the field, and he scored two touchdowns running. So to me, Mike, he was more impressive. No knock on Russell Wilson. I just hadn't seen it from Cam Newton. Really? How the hell did they get to 15-1 and one in his Super Bowl season if you didn't see it? How that's did he win the national ago. championship at Auburn that, beating that's SEC? Six, eight so years you've ago. seen it Nine years for ago. 10 years. For 10 not years, lately. you've seen not, Cam Newton be great and then wear crazy hats not in the lately. postgame. Huh? No, not lately. He hasn't been great lately. So that's why, to me, he was just more impressive yesterday. Russell Wilson is a tremendous quarterback. Yes, he's a great Quarterback. Who's your MVP after two games? We can be silly and ask that I don't, question. I don't really have an MVP Why after not? two You're games. You're supposed it's to. Too, it's a little early. Huh? No, a little early. All right, let's, let's talk about something off. else that's too early to get into. We're going to do it anyway. How about them Cowboys, who somehow escaped starting the season a deathly 0-2? Dallas was down 20 to Atlanta in the first quarter, 19 at the half, and 15 with five minutes to play and still won the game. The key play was Greg Zerline's spinning onside kick that the Falcons watched and the Cowboys pounced on after it went 10 yards. Tony, you hear the praise the Cowboys come back or bury the sorry Falcons? Well, you could easily do either one. That's no problem. I'm going to praise the Cowboys because of that kick. Because that kick just spun around and spun around and inched forward like a turtle. I have never seen a kick that good in that circumstance, and the Falcons, maybe they thought they were playing baseball and this yeah. was a bunt and they were waiting for it to go foul because I have no idea what they were doing. I, I, I'm sure you're going to bury the Falcons. Yeah. Be my guest. Yeah, I'm not going to praise the Cowboys for being 15 down with five minutes to play. Not, so they, they can do that on other shows, and there are plenty of other shows on this network where they praise the Cowboys. I'm not here for that. The Atlanta Falcons, what the hell are you doing? When you're 12 years old, you understand in Pop Warner football that that kick is a free kick. Every kick off after a score is free. That means you better recover it or your opponent can't. I don't want to hear how great a spinning kick it was. You saw it getting close to 10 yards. You better jump your behind on it. Otherwise, the Cowboys get the ball back. This was, I mean, Tony, I hate to say it because I, I don't want to just attack 
every coach, but there's so much bad coaching in the NFL. What were these guys doing during the, during the week of practice, the, the Falcons? They didn't go over any special teams elements. They didn't go over fundamentals. Hey, fellas, if it's a line, you got to jump on a kick when it gets to 8, 9, 10 yards if you see some momentum. That play cost them the game as, in addition to all kinds of other stupid junk they did. So I'm going to give you just a couple of statistics that I think are relevant. In the history of the NFL, the record for teams who have scored 39 points and had I no turnovers, this. as Atlanta this did, is, worthless. is 440 and 0. So what is it for teams Nobody that have scored choked 61 like this, points? What is the score for that? Except we have seen Atlanta choke before in the Super Bowl when they had an insurmountable yeah. lead. And one other thing, Dan Quinn, now 14 and 20 in the last two plus years, he's a defensive coach, Mike. 953 yards and 78 points in two games. Come it's on. awful. It's we move now to the U.S. Open, where only one man was under par yesterday, and only one man was under par for the entire tournament, and he is the same man, the muscular physics major Bryson DeChambeau. He won the Open <laughs> going away. He dominated it. Wilbon, now that DeChambeau has won a major, do you think we will see other players remake their bodies and their swings to get this kind of result. No, are they going to go out and shorten all their clubs to the same length? No, they're, they're not going to do that. They're, they're not. And he's won how many majors? One. One, okay? So the guys he's in out his 20s. He's who, won one. I, I get it. There's other guys who've won 20, and they can't make a cut now in the majors. When they were in their 20s, they won a major, or two or three. So, so that doesn't mean anything. You've got to go several majors before anybody starts copying what you do. And even then, no, people aren't going to go out there and try to gain 45 pounds. In, first of all, you need a pandemic and time off to do that. And they're not going to do that, Tony. They're not going to do that. They're not all going to go Bobby Jones. And look, there's a, the quirkiness about him that drives some people crazy also makes him, to me, I mean, an irresistible villain almost. I asked you, yeah, I called you and I said, can you ever remember a time when golf had a villainous figure? I don't mean his personal life. I just mean the quirkiness with which drives some people nuts. Has there ever been that? And you said maybe Nicholas because he supplanted Palmer. I get that. But Tone, no, they're not going to copy him. They might get beat by him, but they're not going to copy him. Yeah, I mean, I think it's worth noting that he isn't sneaking up on, him, on anybody. He won the NCAAs. And he won the USAM, and now that he's won the Open, he's in a group of only three people yeah. who have accomplished that. <laughs> yeah. Only three. Jack Nicklaus, Tiger Woods, and this guy. Pretty That's pretty rare air. I don't know how many people will try and copy him, but None. I told you this this morning on my podcast. The athlete he reminds me most of is Zion Williamson, who is a superstar talent with a body that's different than everybody else's. And what we worry about with Zion is that body won't last. It's not sustainable. I look at DeChambeau. His swing is not fluid at all. It's unbelievably mechanical. It strains and tears at his body. He seems fueled with rage when he hits the ball. I don't know how long he can go on. <laughs> I find him tremendously with, interesting. With I just don't know how long he can go on. Rage. I don't know if his body, first of all, his swing. You know, other golfers, it seems forever, for 200 years, have looked to find the perfect swing, whatever they think that looks like. And right. then this guy just goes for the result. I mean, it's just like there's not a tree that's tall enough for him not to try to take it over no. with a driver. No. Are you kidding me? So, so I'm, no. I'm part of me is in awe, and then part of me just says, let's see. Let's see how long the this dude can do this. The conventional wisdom went out the window yeah, did, at Wingfoot. They said, work? keep it in a fairway, never in the rough. He was in the rough all, all the, the time. time. He yeah. putted so great, and he approached the green so great. Yeah. It was amazing. Let's take a break. Coming up, Kyler Murray has a big day, and Josh Allen has a huge one. Which team is better? And Anthony Davis hit the buzzer beater for the Lakers, but was Nikola Jokic the best big man on the floor? Did he win? Sorry, spoiler no, alert. No, he didn't win. He didn't win, did the he? The other guy won. The other guy won. So, no, the other guy you won. You know, I'm taking him. The Shambo kills it. He kills it. Yeah. But he you really you does. got him. You got him twerking his back or something. I mean, you know, you got him going well, out. Well, I do because there's violence. It's mail time where I scrawl topics onto scraps of paper and we pretend this is a professional television show. Let me see what's first. Mail time. Well, the part the from the out. attic is not very professional, but the rest of it. More impressive 2-0 team, Bills or Cardinals? Well, of course, as you said, they're both 2-0. And, and for people who thought Josh Allen was going to take a step back, he hasn't. 
Threw for 417 yards and four touchdowns yesterday. Beat the Dolphins in Miami. You know, Stephon Diggs looks really comfortable and looks like a good fit there. But the Cardinals beat Tony's Washington football team. Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray, he can run it whenever he wants. It's judicious use of him, at least. Eight times for 67 yards, 26 of 38. So he's passing accurately. He's got Fitz and DeAndre Hopkins out there to throw the ball to. They're 2-0. and They have a better concept, it seems to me, of what to do to support him when to run him, how to run him, how to protect him. And they need to do all those things, and they are. I'm going with the team in the desert, and I know you'll go the other way and take somebody in the home state of New York that is yours. Well, I'm going to do that. I don't think anyone who watches this show is surprised that, once again, you have a third or fourth home team in football and it's the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> the reason I'm two? saying Buffalo, <laughs> the reason I'm saying Buffalo is because I believe that Buffalo is in a far easier division than Arizona is in. I know Arizona beat San Francisco already, but they've got Seattle and they've got the Rams. That's a very tough division. It is. Buffalo's already beaten the Bills. They've already beaten the Dolphins. New England, I, I, New well, England she, is still New England, but I, I think they the are Jets. a different kind of New England. Yeah. And I will tell you this, speaking of New England, Mike, that Josh Allen is the closest thing to Cam Newton of all the young quarterbacks. He's 6'5", right? Yeah. 6'5", and big 240. And rugged and he's big talented. and he's strong he and he can gun it down the field. How about Bills so and that's, Cardinals that's why I'm taking in Buffalo. the big game? Bills and Cardinals. you like that, wouldn't you? Yes. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, it would be. I'd like and they're it. from upstate New York, which I care about. What does it tell you that the Chiefs had to scrape by the Chargers and their rookie quarterback? Their rookie quarterback, Justin Herbert, is the only thing I took from that game. And I, I, I mean, I, it was mostly red zone-ish. I might have checked into that game for a few other plays. But I just thought he looked in command. He looked like he, like he knew what he was doing. And sometimes you get rookie quarterbacks or second-year quarterbacks or guys starting and late bloomers, and they don't look comfortable like that. They don't have command against a team that can eat you up. He did, the moment did not engulf him. He was my takeaway from that game. In yeah. time, well, that and the, the, the guy who keeps sailing 58-yard kicks through and says, oh, yeah, you got to have another timeout. Keep bringing them. Back me up five more. I'll do it again. That was impressive as well. So my takeaway was that the Kansas City Chiefs won because they pay off on winning in this league, not being close, winning in this league. And if you watched any part of that game, you knew that Mahomes was going to take them down the field and they were going to win. So I will get to the kicker. Harrison Butker, I think his Butker. name is. Butker, yep. He goes right in a row. He goes 53, 58, 58. That's great. They call the first one back because there's movement on the offensive line. They call the second one back because uh, it was a timeout uh, they called. call timeout. Yeah. Right? And to ice him, call timeout. So then he kicks they the third one. You know what happens after that? <laughs> Say goodnight and tip your waiter. Yeah. Because that guy goes boom, boom, boom. Boom, over 50, three times in a row. Not in the thin air in Denver. No, at sea level in Los Angeles. I'm just a little worried. That guy is a stud. I'm worried he's going to take, you know, sort of take my man Nick Lowry, my friend Nick Mail Lowry, this. out of play in Kansas City where he has been known as just a great, great, great former kicker of the <clears> Chiefs. <throat> and now they got this guy going 58 multiples. Yeah, former kicker. Which big man were you more impressed with down the stretch Anthony Davis or Nikola Jokic? What did you say again about paying off in this league? They pay off in this league too on winning. What? On wins. Winning. Yeah. Jokic yeah. was great. This is not a surprise. It may be a surprise to people who are just starting to watch later in the playoffs, later in the bubble, and they go, wow, Jokic, I, you know, uh, yeah. I, 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 is, is that the guy? This was Djokovic? No, Jokic. He's great. Anthony Davis. The play doesn't go to LeBron. He finds the spot on that curl out of bounds. And the play was made, of course, by Rondo, who, like a quarterback, surveyed his options, went through his progressions, and got to Anthony Davis. Pass, swish, walk. It was great. Anthony Davis, Chicago's own. Yeah, the answer is Anthony Davis because he won the game. There's no doubt about that. Anthony Davis and LeBron James are the two best players still in the playoffs oh, in the team. entire yes. league. Yes, They should win. And they are, they're going to win. When you look at Jokic for the first time, you think he's awkward, he's doughy, he's not that quick. He's lost he weight, he's not doughy you. anymore. He's a 
Great player. Great He's player. a great player. But Anthony Davis' statistics in the playoffs are actually a little bit better. Davis is going 29 and 11 and shooting 57%. Jokic is going 25 and 10 and shooting 51%. I got a great stat for you about your boy Jamal Murray. He played 44 out of 48 minutes. When he was on the floor, he was plus 16. In the four minutes, listen, listen he wasn't this. on the listen floor. Denver was minus 18. <laughs> so you, know, you got you got to play him like Wilt. You have to keep him out there the whole 48. Tony, you Tony quit the side for anybody whining about Last why LeBron one. didn't get the MVP. Because you know what? LeBron's the best player. He's great. But LeBron's got Anthony Davis dopes. What did Giannis have? Oh, wait. He didn't have anybody on the way to the best record in the league, which is why he's at the crib. LeBron, Anthony Davis, I don't care Giannis about, you know at what? the crib. I don't care about the fourth email because I'm one of those people that <laughs> wanted to see LeBron James be the MVP. And I think in every critical test, he was the MVP, and the vote stunk. All right. <laughs> did the Celtics figure something out? Yes. Yeah, they figured out they had to play better. I mean, let's not make, let's not try to, you know, this is what happens when people have too much time to fill on some of these shows, not ours, of course. They try to find all these esoteric reasons of what people had to do, and they find statistical mumbo-jumbo, as our friend George Michael used to say, to back up some of this junk. The Celtics had to play better in the final six to eight minutes of the game so that they didn't see double-digit leads disappear. Gordon Hayward helps them, even if it's in a marginal way coming off the bench, it still helps. Yes, the winner of game four, the next game, Wednesday night, is going to take this series. Winner of game four. So I think what they found was Gordon Hayward. I, I think they were a thin... T Look, I like them a lot, but I like them when they have everybody out there. Yes. Gordon Hayward helps their rotation tremendously. He's a steady team player. That was a difference. It, they... The Celtics always go ahead. Miami always falls behind. But in the previous two games, Miami again. caught up and passed them. Yeah. And they caught up, but they didn't pass them this time. So, I mean, I don't have anything intelligent to say about this, as I do about LeBron, because I think these are relatively <laughs> even teams who play the same sort Miami of style, and I like behind. watching Miami their games. Miami can't give away a lead like that in game four or five. But, once again, you said That's Anthony That's Davis it. and LeBron are the best That's tag it. team, right? Then who's Giannis' tag team partner? Let's take one you last fail break, again. Still to come. Case closed. The NFL the loses a slew of fails stars. Fails to make it Just change. Just out. Fails Stop miserably. Dion out. takes a college head coaching job. Wow. I bet you didn't see that coming. He gave you a I jacket we saw one. It coming last didn't he week. have a jacket made up for you? A did, did, a Happy time, people. Happy 49th birthday, Alfonso Ribeiro. The actor was the nerdy Carlton on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Actually, he was the funniest character on the he show. He was. You may remember he and Will Smith were on the basketball team at Bel-Air Academy. Maybe that's how he got the role as the new Chris Paul in all of those commercials. He's the guy who parks in Chris Paul's space. He's the guy who throws the kettlebell and breaks Chris Paul's workout mirror. The commercials are sort of cute, though to be fair, at 49, he'd actually be the old Chris Paul. I can tell you must not have watched Fresh Prince because you can't talk about Alfonso Ribeiro without talking about Tom Jones, and it's not unusual. You can't, you can't, you can't do that. Did you ever watch Fresh Prince? Yes. You Happy did not. Happy anniversary, Ken O'Brien and Dan Marino. That's a total I watched lie. it on this you day 34 not. years ago. These two quarterbacks who were drafted in the class of 1983, O'Brien at number 24 to the Jets, and Marino at number 27 to the Dolphins combined for what was then an NFL record of 884 yards passing that stood for 25 years. O'Brien had a career high of 479 yards, four touchdowns. Marino threw for 448 yards and six touchdowns as the Jets beat the Dolphins in overtime, 51 to 45. You take away 43 yards of sacks, you get to 884. It's a tremendous amount of passing yards, or as we say now, an average Big 12 game. Probably was wholly unsatisfying. You're not going to tell me you remember that game in live time, do you? You remember that? You don't remember that. No. Go on, I Tom don't remember Jones. anything. Not unusual. How yeah, can you I remember huh? that. And... Happy trails to a slew of NFL stars. Big name players such as Carolina's Christian McCaffrey, the Giants' Saquon Barkley, and Jimmy Garoppolo and Nick Bosa, the 49ers, all injured yesterday, expected to miss games. Barkley has a torn ACL. Mm. Bosa may as well. McCaffrey's ankle is bad as is Garoppolo's. Denver, which already lost Von Miller, lost quarterback Drew Locke and wide receiver Cortland Sutton. 
The looming question is whether this rash of injuries is as a result of no exhibition games and a truncated practice schedule. And the answer so far is, we don't know, but teams are girding for the worst. Tony was watching that Bears-Giants game yesterday, and when Saquon Barkley down, went down, it just made me sick with the ACL, and I'm sitting there in my house watching this wearing a Gale Sayers jersey, and you are old enough and appreciative enough of his career to know how Gale Sayers went out. And I started explaining to my son, it's different now. You can come back. Saquon Barkley can come back 50-plus years later from this injury. We hope he does. Big finish, here we go. Deion Sanders is the new head football coach at Jackson State. Your expectations? Wide open football and a whole lot of excitement. That's what I expect and hope for. The Padres place the playoff spot for the first time in 14 years. You excited for them? Very much so. I love the uniforms. I love a lot of the things they do. I hope they get to play the Dodgers. That would be fun. Nebraska, your school, yeah. is complaining about its Big Ten schedule. I suppose you think that's fair. I mean, the AD, Bill Moose, was really good at what he does. You know, if your school doesn't thumb their nose at the conference, then maybe you can ask for a better schedule. Otherwise, shh. Game two of Stars Lightning tonight. Will Tampa even it up? It's all goalies in the finals, all goalies. Last one, Saints and Raiders tonight. Who you got in that game? I'll be contrary. I'll take the Raiders in their new stadium. No fans have been in the new stadium. How about that? We're out of time. We will try and do better the next time. And I'm Tony Kornheiser. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, knuckleheads. Now, to get you set for Monday Night Football, here's Susie Culver and the Countdown Crew. I think this song is It's Not Unusual. I think I saw it a it's few times. It's Not Unusual. Tom Jones. Come on.